It's national meets regional. Welcome to Sidewalks Entertainment, the long-running celebrity, music, and art series. Join us now for an exciting new path to celebrity interviews, music, rising talents, and much, much more. Our guests today are rock musicians whose massive hit single, Hanging By A Moment, first propelled them into the spotlight. While they are still rocking and uh, are here today to talk about their seventh album, Out Of The Wasteland, I'd like to welcome the band Lifehouse. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Hey Cindy, thanks for having us. Oh gosh, it's absolutely our pleasure. You know, you guys started this band back in the late 90s and did have this, this huge hit, Hanging by, the, by a Moment. Were you surprised at how the song just skyrocketed and took off? I was surprised. Ricky wasn't surprised. I know, I was surprised. We both were like 18, so we kind of like were, it was a, a giant roller coaster for a few years of, of world touring supporting that record. When you're 18, you get excited about little things like finding 50 cents under your couch pillows, you know, so having a song uh, go out and explode on the radio was definitely unexpected, but it, it changed our lives forever. So what was it like to ride that crazy success train? Uh, it was it was like lightning in a bottle, you know, we, uh, we started the band with zero fan base, we hit the road, we were playing some pubs where the record label would actually have to go bribe people. Uh, for free beer to actually come and see our set, you know, in the very beginning. And then all of a sudden, Hanging By Moment comes on the radio, and, and uh, a couple months later, we're on the Pearl Jam tour, and then we hop on the Matchbox 20 Arena tour. So everything happened so fast. If I could go back and change anything, I would just tell younger me just to really enjoy all these moments as they're happening, because it's it can be so surreal that you go into kind of a survival mode, and uh, you're not really present. Uh, during these amazing moments. So if I could go back, I would just slow down and just kind of really soak it all in. Well, you could apply that philosophy to, to, to so many things in your life. I think that's really insightful. Right. Let, let's talk about your seventh album, Out of the Wasteland. Uh, what was the vision for this project? And you know, what did you, what did you, what did you see that this was gonna become? Like, was there something in advance, like when you were writing the, the music and the, and, the songs or tell me tell me about that well we all we all just went our separate ways for a little bit we needed a a, a break after 15 you know 15 solid years on the road we needed to kind of just unplug for a little bit and uh, Bryce started a side project Ricky was um, playing with the Goo Goo Dolls for a little bit and I just kind of locked myself in the studio and just started writing songs again um, we recorded and wrote over 65 70 songs for this album and took about a year and a half to two years to, uh, to, to make this project. And so it was, it was really about just finding um, inspired moments again. You know, we, we left our major label and we're kind of doing it all um, on an independent level right now. But uh, as soon as the songs Hurricane and Flight were written, um, that was, those were the two songs that kind of were the catalyst to bring all of the guys back into the studio. And uh, we just tried to have fun with it, you know, and really try to preserve that spark that we had in the beginning and, and did a lot of soul searching and really tried to come up with something that we can be proud of and, and, uh, and, and stand by. Well, I know that you got to collaborate with uh, legendary movie score composer James Newton Howard. What did he bring to the table? Oh, I, I've been listening to his music since I was 18, 19 years old. So just to get to sit in a room with him and and just kind of get inside his head a little bit and watch his process. He's just on a completely different level. He's a, he's a musical genius and to be able to just watch him 
do his craft was just such an amazing uh, experience, you know, and, and to be able to take some of our our uh, influences from from the film world and kind of put it into a, to a, an acoustic moment or, or a rock moment and really feel that kind of epicness that happens when you record live strings was uh, was definitely a, a highlight on on this new album. I can imagine. Well, and you're going to be touring uh, to promote this album. Are there some favorite cities that you like to visit when uh, when you're out on the road? Where do you like to go? We like San Francisco. Steve yeah. likes San Francisco. Yeah, I, lo I love the food there. So. Yeah, the it's all about the food. Is amazing. So yeah, we're kind of biased. We're kind of biased. California as a whole is <laughs> exactly. always a good spot That's to right. tour. Yeah, we have some good wine here too. So I, I'd have to agree with you on that. <laughs> oh yeah, we're we're definitely fans. Of, oh yeah. of uh, Napa. Yep. We like so, the vine. so when you get a chance to actually visit a city, you know, do you, do you get to be a tourist at all, or do they kind of keep you cooped up working on music and playing arenas? Oh, we we try to go and experience um, every city if we have time. Ricky's always on his phone, making sure that we try the. The, the local eateries. He's a Yelp wizard over here. So <laughs> I was just gonna ask that if who who of, of the social media sort of outlets do you guys are you on social media a lot and who is the 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 big Twitter person or uh, who, who does it the most? <laughs> That's Bryce's department. Kind of by default. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's the only one with a selfie stick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, no, um, we, we try to stay on the ball with it as best as we can without like being too into it. I mean, it's uh, it's something that's necessary, I think, for every band to be mm -hmm. ingrained in in order to uh, adapt to you know what's going on right now. And uh, we have good communication with our fan base that way. That's right. Well, you do have fans all over the world. I mean, not just America. I mean, uh, Brazil, India, the Philippines. I was seeing all kinds of like fan sites, you know, when I was checking online. Just because I'm interested in kind of hearing what the fans are saying, too. Um, do you find that the reaction of the fans to your music is uh, different from American fans versus fans from other parts of the world? Or are all fans kind of built the same? No, they. They express themselves differently. I feel like the, the European fans feel a little bit more um, less reserved. I guess you could say they, you know, it, it seems like sometimes they uh, get into a club and they move as one organism with like the rock fist all at the same time. It's a, yeah, every city kind of has their uh, their their little quirks. In Japan, they're so respectful and they'll they'll um, give you a great applause, but then they'll be completely silent after that. You know, so. It's, it goes from being really loud to complete silence, you know. So it's definitely interesting. Everyone has their different different cultures. It's like, is anyone out there? <laughs> yeah, no, and they're listening. They're just, just very, hear very like, respectful. That song must have sounded really bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> silent. I get it. It's a little like me on this side, since I'm not seeing you, you know, physically. So I, I, I get you on that. Uh, listen, as we close, you guys, uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to all the fans who have supported you guys for all of these years? You could say it directly. I mean, thank you. I mean, we... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks we for staying with us after two and a half yeah, years of I think you, You're mentioning seven records, and we've been That's hearing true. that over the last couple of weeks, and it's like surreal to kind of hear it and have like a bunch of, uh, just like a healthy conglomerate of fans that are so supportive to us, and um, you know we're really grateful for that. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Simplicity at its finest, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being with us today on Sidewalks. It was just a pleasure to meet you. I really wish you guys all the best. You too. Nice Thanks, Cindy. For more full-length celebrity interviews, visit SidewalksTV.com.